Stardew Valley took the indie game's world by storm. A charming and immersive game about moving to the valley to pursue a career in farming. You could put a ridiculous amount of hours into the game and still have so much to do. And it was all created by one man, Eric Barone. Needless to say, when he released the trailer for his new game, Haunted Chocolatier, everyone was hyped. The one thing I've wanted out of Stardew Valley is the ability to re-experience the game for the very first time. And out of nowhere, we suddenly have a very similar opportunity with this brand new game. In this video, I'm going to be discussing how the game looks, how it compares to Stardew, what Barone has already said about the game, and also my own personal thoughts and predictions on how the game might evolve over time. To do this, I'll be using old Stardew trailers and looking at what elements changed and upgraded over the development stage to try and predict what elements of the new game might change. So, first and foremost, let's take a look at the trailer. Immediately, I'm just blown away by these visuals and the sound. Its entire atmosphere feels so comforting and homely. I absolutely love the warm glow of the lights inside of the buildings juxtaposing with the chilly yet beautiful snowy aesthetic. The NPCs have a similar look to Stardew, while also not feeling like a copy and paste of the same characters. And building on that, it looks like the player character not only has a bit of a different look to it, but it also moves differently. Take a look at the walking animation and how the hair also flops on its own. The hood and text boxes have a distinct style that's different to Stardew, however these things are honestly pretty likely to go through a few iterations and changes as the game progresses. But the fact that he isn't going with the same ones, even at this early stage of development, shows that we aren't just getting reused assets. Looking at the jumping through the painting sequence, this is something that's really interesting and unique. It's pretty early to make guesses, but it gives me such a Mario 64 feeling of using paintings to warp to different worlds. This is shown immediately after we are told that we need ingredients, so I think it's safe to assume that we'll be able to travel to different places to gather certain ingredients for the chocolate making. The combat and gathering tasks seem to look like they aren't fully finished yet, and I would hazard a guess they'll go through a few visual changes. However, we do also see confirmation of character customization here. Not that it was something we weren't already expecting. We see elements of supernatural with these spooky ghosts. However, unless you don't know what the word haunted means, that was going to be obvious. Potential friendship or romance is seen with cutscenes, interaction, dialogue options and gifting. However, there's a chance that Brown just decides to focus on the story and chocolate making this time around. So that's the teaser trailer for the game, and it really does ask more questions than it answers. Which is great, because it means we get to discover more and more about the game, and have these questions answered as each new trailer is released. But for the fans that might want more information as soon as possible, like I did admittedly, Brown posted an FAQ and blog post. The blog post tells us a little bit about the game, and I recommend reading it all the way through if you're really excited for the game, but as a rundown, he tells us that the idea of chocolate just sort of came to him and that he wanted to work more around the supernatural and magical elements in this next game, as opposed to Stardew's more grounded reality, except for the Junimos. Rather than thinking of it as Stardew Valley's darker and scarier sibling, Barone suggests that it's going to be more like a comparison between the moon and the sun, which I can already imagine will nail the magical and haunted feeling to the game. He's also made it abundantly clear that this game is still early in development, and has a long way to go before it's finished, which means that the actual game has so many possibilities, even to Barone himself. He said, It's evolving organically as I develop it, so I'm not sure where it will go. But at its core, the gameplay loop involves gathering ingredients, making chocolate, and running a chocolate shop. So, we have the base of the game, but it's going to be really hard to predict what else will come up in the final product. Barone also released a more recent blog post talking about some of the stuff he's been working on with the combat in the game which he says will play a much bigger role than it did in Stardew. He also said, Everything seen so far could still change before the game is finished. If you follow the development of Stardew Valley, this will be familiar. Which brings me nicely onto the final thing I wanted to discuss. Looking back at some of the earliest trailers of Stardew, we can see that this version of the game looked nothing like what it did on release. In fact, it looks like a bootleg version of Stardew Valley, bought from the guy that sells those Nintendo DS cards with 200 games on. Obviously, Brown has progressed and become much more experienced with game design since then, 
but it goes without saying there'll be elements in the Haunted Chocolatier trailer that end up heavily changed by the time we get our hands on it. Personally, I think the overlay will end up being changed somewhere along the way, much like how it was changed from the original Stardew trailer. The bright red colouring and very simple design of the health bar feels like it wouldn't fit into any of the surroundings in the game that we've seen, and when one element of the HUD is changed, it's not far-fetched to suggest that the entire HUD will undergo the same update design so that it all fits together thematically. One of the reasons that a lot of stuff could likely end up changed is this idea of one element not quite fitting in and causing a chain reaction so that everything else still matches it. Looking at the Stardew trailer, while it does look like almost an entirely different game, all of its elements fit together well and look like they belong together. If the overlays look like modern day Stardew Valley overlays, while the rest of the game still look the same, it just wouldn't fit together at all. Overall, I'm really excited for the game to come out, whenever that might be, and I'm preparing myself for a lot of changes to gameplay and graphics. It seems that there's a lot of care and effort going into the game, and honestly, I'm happy to wait for it to go through all of the changes, updates, and tweaks that it might need to get to the same level as Stardew Valley, and I have no doubt in my mind that it'll get there. <laughs>